Hi, this is Jessie Silverman with Big Blue Canopy. I am a speech language pathologist here, and I would like to share with you today some different uh, therapy techniques that you can work on at home when targeting um, articulation skills. So, um, just to briefly go over, when I first introduced a sound to work on, um, steps to teaching the specific sounds, I start with just the sound in isolation. So, for instance, if I was working on the S sound, we would work on just establishing, okay, teeth together and blow the air out. And then I'll work on getting good placement for that. Like, okay, let's do it five times. Good, okay. And once they're able to establish that sound in isolation very well, then we move on to um, syllables. And so, um, ways that we work on the sound in syllable, at syllable level. Um, and I apologize if this shows up backwards, but you can see that I will put the specific target in the middle of our speech bug, I like to call him. And then I put the vowel sounds on the outsides um, of his legs. So we'll work on first establishing the sound in the initial position of syllables. So like say, see, sigh, so, sue. And once they can do it in the initial position, then we will try to work on it in the final position. So like ace, ice, or ace, ice, os, us. And once they can do that very well, then we'll even go a step further with our speech bug and we'll put it in the middle. So like a say, e, see, i, si, o, su, u, su, um, or o, so, u, su. And once they're able to establish those sounds very well at syllable level um, with just the vowel sounds, then we're ready to move into the word level. And I will typically teach the sound at the initial position first of words. And once they can do it very well in like say, soup, sat, seat, then I'll try to work on it in the final position. So like mass, mice, house, pass. And once they can do that, sometimes the medial position, the middle position of words can be trickier. Then I'll work on those words. So like whistle, castle, passing. And then once they've mastered at word level, I move into doing phrases with the words. So like simple, like two and three word phrases. Um, so like pass a ball or build a castle. And once they can do phrases, then they're ready to do longer sentences. So like, I like to build castles, or I will pass the ball. And then once they've established the one word at sentence level, I'll do some loaded sentences. So um, almost like tongue twisters, like putting two to three targets within the same sentence. So like Sally built a castle, or um, I am singing a song to uh, my boss. So something like that where you're targeting multiple positions of words. And once they've mastered that loaded sentence level, you're ready to go into structured conversation. So I might set, kid, set kids up for something like, okay, this picture has a lot of our words that have our S sound. Tell me like five things you see in this picture. So they already are training like to know, okay, when I say these words to Miss Jessie, I have to put my good S sound on them. So that's more of structured conversation. And then once they master that structured conversational level, I'll move into general conversation. So like, tell me about your school day. What did you do with friends? Where um, whenever I hear that distorted S, I'll say, oh, can you try that again? And have them try to fix it. And um, once they're at this conversational level, I tell parents that you can give them occasional reminders, like, oh, try to fix that S, try that S again. Um, or, oh, is that, a, is that a think or a sink? And see if they can fix that S if that's the distortion that they're doing. So that's typically the, um, the steps involved with first teaching those sounds and then establishing where they can generalize them to conversation. Um, and then just some tips for common errors. Uh, to establish some of those sounds at home that your kids might be having trouble with. 
Um, so those M, P, and B sounds, we like to call them bilabial sounds because your lips are together. M, B, P for those. Um, you can give them tips like where you're over exaggerating, like, oh, do you want more? Or, oh, did you see the bubble? Ba, 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 where they're getting those lips together. Or you can gently give them like touch cues, like tapping, like ba, 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 or mmm, or holding their hand up to your chin, mmm, where they can feel the vibration of your voice with your lips together and also visually attend to what your lips are doing. K's and G's, a lot of times kids wanna do T and D sounds for those. So um, to work on, like if they're doing like tutti for cookie, um, you want them to get that tongue back. So not tutti where their tongue's going forward. You want them to get it down and back cookie. So sometimes when I'm first teaching that sound, I will tell kids, oh, you know what's helpful when we're working on those k and g sounds is to keep your mouth open. G -g 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 -g. Cause then their tongue doesn't want to go forward for that T. You can also use um, a sucker to help facilitate that placement. So if they're really struggling, like their tongue just wants to go up, like even if they're trying and they're still getting that tongue for a T, just gently press the sucker down to their tongue and see if they can get that back placement for it. So I use suckers a lot of times too for those K and G sounds. And um, so the S, I know we briefly went over that, S and Zs, um, a lot of times kids have a hard time establishing those teeth together. Zzz, and putting that tongue up behind um, their front teeth to make that precise sound. So a lot of times I'll tell them, oh, that's our smile sound. So we're gonna smile with our teeth together. And see if they can do the sound in isolation. Sometimes kids do really well with the um, analogy of like, keep the snake in the cage. Like, oh, oh, uh oh, the snake popped out of his cage. Our teeth are the cage. We gotta lock him in there. Oh, the snake stayed in. Uh oh, he popped out. Keep him in there. So sometimes kids do well with that um, as when they're working on that S sound as well. And then uh, the SH sound, uh, kids a lot of times have trouble with making their lips go out for that sound. So I tell kids a lot of times, make fish lips. Shh, and then we're gonna push the air. Or sometimes you can even put like a bubble or um, a tissue or something that they can get the feedback of the airflow coming out. Like, oh, let's make the bubble dance. Shh, where they can get that. And same with the F sound, actually, um, a lot of times kids have trouble establishing the placement and the airflow for that sound. Um, so a lot of times I'll tell them, okay, we're gonna put our teeth on our lip like this. Okay, once you do that, we're gonna blow the air. Sometimes kids can't even get that, like it's hard to motor plan to get those top teeth to their bottom lip. So sometimes I'll even like take my sucker again and I don't have the pixie stick sugar, but I'll rub it in pixie stick sugar and then I'll rub that where it leaves like a sugar residue on their lip and then tell them, okay, we're gonna try to get that off, but you can only use your teeth. And when they're scraping it, say, okay, that's exactly how you need to look for F sound and we're just gonna blow air. And sometimes that can help establish the um, dental placement on the lower lip for F. Um, another airflow sound that some kids can have trouble with making is the H. Uh, and I like to give feedback like holding your hand up to their mouth or your mouth like ha, ha, ha. Do you feel that? Try to make that sound ha, ha, ha. Hot house or you can even use like a bubble like catching it on the wand and have them make the bubble dance like ha, ha, ha. Make that bubble move make him dance or try to blow him off Hot house and that can help establish um, the airflow that's necessary for the H sound um, for the L, uh, I have my little mouth puppet here. Um, so this guy, sometimes I use him to show. So for our L, we want our tongue up, uh, la la la. Sometimes kids, when they first establish that sound, they'll do an exaggerated like tongue protrusion, like lion. Well, we don't want them to do that because then when it's in connected speech, they're not gonna over enunciate and protrude that tongue for it. So we wanna try to work on just keeping the tongue in the mouth and lifting it, lion, and seeing if they can do that. Over time, you can 
fade that tongue protrusion if they are initially doing that. Sometimes kids do over exaggerate it where they want to stick their tongue out. So over time, try to teach them, okay, now that we got our, we have our tongue up, lion, we want to try to keep that tongue in, lion, behind those teeth. Um, just so in connected speech, it'll generalize over. And then R can be tricky. Um, so I use my mouth puppet a lot of times for R. Um, so there's two different ways to teach R. With one of them, the sides of the tongue. So the back sides of the tongue are pulled back to your back molars. So like right here and right here, those are pulled back to where they're going. The tongue is going up and then the back of the tongue is spread to those molars. And sometimes I'll even tell kids like the tip of your tongue, like we're almost making like a bathtub shape. So the back of your tongue is going to those back teeth and then the top of your tongue is going back to like the roof of your mouth. So like, err, I don't know if you guys can see in my mouth. So like I'll lift it up with my puppet, like err, where the tongue's going back to like the roof of the mouth and the side is spreading to those back molars. Um, another position is where the R is almost pulled back like um, a hump on the roof of the mouth. So like with my mouth puppet, um, pulling it up and back. So like, uh, you probably can't see in my mouth, but like pulling the tongue all the way up and back. Um, so R can be tricky. It can be something um, over time that gets better, um, but just trying to tell them like, and I tell them a lot of times to smile when they're doing it. like because that helps them break the habit of doing that W, like, oh. So that can be helpful too, like, bring your lips back, Arr. that helps, and tongue up, um, So R can be tricky, but there's some ways that you can help break that W pattern if they're substituting that for R. And sometimes some articulation deficits can be more phonological, so like they're dropping sounds. Um, like consonant deletion, so uh, like if they're doing like half or hat, um, I'll over exaggerate and emphasize like, oh, there's an ending sound, hat. And a lot of times I'll point to my mouth and like drag it out or like home so they can see where the sound is that they need to mark. Or sometimes I'll even give them like tactile input like on their hands, like I'll squeeze them like hat, um, just so they can see what sound they're dropping and where it needs to be marked. And then same with like, Middle consonants, sometimes kids will do like um, pow for paddle. Like, oh, that has a sound in the middle, paddle or paddle. And like giving them the tactile input on their hand for which sound that they're dropping. Um, and then sometimes multi-syllable words can be hard because they'll be dropping some of those sounds. Um, so like banana for banana or nana for banana. Like, oh, there's three sounds, ready? I'm gonna show you. Banana, or like I'll even clap sometimes with kids. Banana, or take their hands and gently squeeze. Banana, or they could even jump. Banana, like all of our sounds are gonna have three syllables, three sounds, so we're gonna jump three times every time we say it. Banana, pajamas, potato. And seeing if that can help give them that um, input while they're marking the sounds to realize, oh, it's not just two sounds that I'm supposed to mark, it's all three. Um, and then also <clears throat> words that have blends. So blends are um, two consonant sounds together. So words like stop, um, swim, uh, smoke, uh, slide, glove, glass. There's L blends, S blends, R blends, broom. Um, sometimes kids, when there's a cluster of two consonant sounds together, they want to drop one of them. So they could be doing sop for stop or top for stop. Um, so some strategies that can help mark those. Um, I like to draw, like, especially like with those S blends, draw the airflow up my arm. So like I'll go top and then like I'll hit the second consonant sound on my shoulder. Swim or smoke and that'll help kids to um, realize that oh there's a sound at the beginning of those words that I need to put on there um, so that'll help <clears throat> them mark those sounds too uh, so those are just some strategies that can hopefully help you uh, work on some of those articulation skills at home um, and if you have any questions feel free to email us at info at bigbluecanopy.com and I would be happy to answer any questions you may have
Thanks. Have a great day.